Today we're on our way to the furthest corner of Anduna, on the hunt for one of Africa's most beautiful antelope, the Nyala. Anduna is home to an impressive herd of these prized animals. However, they are notoriously reclusive and keep themselves very much to themselves amongst the densely wooded valleys. Gavin has recently introduced some new blood to keep the herd healthy, but the older dominant bull is keeping some of the younger bulls from sowing their wild oats. If the herd is to remain healthy, this bull needs to step aside. My task is to remove him from the herd in order to allow the younger bulls to come through and refresh the gene pool. Of course, where hunting's involved, I'm always happy to oblige. Plus I hear he's a cracking trophy. It's a fair trek out from camp, so we take the Great Wall Steed most of the way and then head out into the valley on foot. Now it's not just the Nyala that live in this far-flung valley. Anduna is home to an abundance of game, and we've got to get past a thousand eyes en route to our bull. However, it's not long before we spot the Nyala on the fringe of the bush on the other side of the valley. But to get to them, we've got to get through the thick stuff. And in this thick stuff, there's a herd of eland. There's several large bulls, a load of cows and some young'uns all scattered amongst the bushes, grazing and hiding in the shade as it's a very hot day. We must be stealthy and avoid spooking the eland. A herd of startled eland are not the quietest animals in the bush. They would definitely alert the Nyala to our presence. And that would make for a very long, tiring and frustrating day. So we must creep carefully through the bush and take care to manoeuvre around the eland. Seeing the Anyala move slowly across the valley in the far distance, we plan our path from the hilltop and patiently move through the bush. But before we get too far, we spot an eland cow right on our route. Okay, I've just spotted through the bush about 100 metres away. There's an eland cow feeding up into the wind. Now she's in a very thick bush, but the sun is on her face, which means she must be in a clearing somewhere. The sun's coming from behind us, but so is the wind. So what we need to do, the wind is coming across here, to go down the hill, and then come up around this section of thick bush. We changed direction, but haven't gotten far before we noticed our Nyala have also changed direction, and so we moved to plan B. Heading up the hill now, we stumble upon yet another cow. This one is only a few yards in front of us, and we almost walk right out in front of her. Startling even just one cow could lead to the entire herd turning and making a run for it towards our Anyala, and that wouldn't be good. We scout for an alternative route, but it's proving tricky as the wind changes constantly, blowing right past us and towards her. She gets pretty twitchy, so we decide to hang fire. So Gavin, they're giving us a run round today. It would seem that if it's either the wind that's against us, or the cows. The cows and, and, the, uh, and, and the young ones. The young ones are dead. Well, that's what makes the stalking so difficult. Is they lay low. So we're using you low. They see underneath the brush, they see that little bit of movement. Yeah. And also the sun is coming from behind. So each little bit of movement, they see. We pass the nervous cow once the wind has ceased a little but again we notice our Nyala has changed direction. We head down the valley and try to cut them off, but we run into a huge eland bull in a small clearing. He's happily grazing away with a few cows and young bulls. If only we were after eland today, this guy would surely make a very fine trophy indeed. But alas, we are not, and so we leave the big guy to go about his business. As the wind blows in all directions up and down the valley, the herd is clearly uneasy. They know something is out there, but they're not exactly sure what. Their ears are pricked and their eyes wide open as they catch a whiff of us in the blustery conditions. We continually change the direction as the Nyala head one way and then the other, and we zigzag through the eland. As the day grows old, the shadows lengthen, but finally we catch a break. With our Nyala just the other side of this thick bush and heading our way, we set up on a small bank overlooking a clearing and wait it out. It shouldn't be too long before our bull emerges on the other side and I'll have a clear shot. We wait, but our bull doesn't come. We move for a better view and see that the herd has unbelievably changed direction once more and are now heading the other way. As the sun begins to set, we move around the valley and into a perfect position for an ambush. 
We can see the Nyala indeed heading our way, but as the light fades, it's only a matter of time before it will be too dark to take a shot. The herd begins to move, and several Nyala track across our line of sight, but not our bull. Gavin is very clear which bull it is we're after. Just when I think he's eluded us, our bull steps into the clear. This half light is where the Aimpoint H30S really comes into its own. I place the red dot on the bull's shoulders and squeeze the trigger. The Ruger No. 1 delivers the 400 grain Hornady Dangerous Game Series round perfectly, literally lifting the bull off its feet and pushing it back several yards. He's down, he's finished. So that is someday stalking. This guy has made us walk miles and miles uphill and down dale. And then finally, right at last knockings, he actually came to us. Now the wind's been, the wind's been evil today. And uh, it's changed, it's come from the left, it's come from the right, it's come from behind us. And as you can see now, the weather has, churned, the weather has turned against us too. But uh, this is what it's about. Sometimes patience is what you need. Just wait, wait, and wait some more, and good things will happen. As you can see, we flipped him over to see where the entry wound uh, was. Now it's slightly quartering towards us, and I was shooting up hill, which is why the exit wound came out quite so high. But as you can see, it's perfect in there, straight through, through the engine room, and out the other side. Not only did it take out all the vitals, it would have also anchored him, because it took out both legs as well. So you can see underneath here, he's starting to develop a really beautiful, luscious skirt there. And as Gavin said earlier, the coloration on these Nyala is just spectacular. It's a real shame when you have to shoulder mount them because this makes a perfect full mount. In fact, this one is gonna make a perfect full mount. So I'm really pleased. I've been after a Nyala for a while. They're one of the most elusive antelope in the entirety of Africa. And uh, finally patience paid off and I got mine. So still plenty of work to do back at the larder. Come on then, Gavin, your turn. Another great adventure at Nduna Hunting Safaris in South Africa's beautiful East Cape. To find out more about hunting with Nduna, visit ndunahuntingsafaris.co.za. Be sure to subscribe to Team TV for the best hunting, airgun and gear videos on YouTube.